Hello everybody. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Sebastian Abdurrahman. Uh, I work for UNOSEMRE and on behalf of UNOSEMRE I would like to uh, welcome and thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Uh, this is the uh, second talk of our uh, arts and cultural lecture series and uh, we, we are planning to have uh, every night at least uh, two uh, talks and uh, so please welcome. And uh, uh, to our tonight's speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Philip Witz. Uh, I hope uh, I pronounced right your surname. And uh, he is a senior teaching fellow uh, at the Department of History uh, of SOAS and the Warwick University. Uh, mainly, he will talk us tonight about the German community in Istanbul the, during the late of the Ottoman Empire and the early period of the Turkish Republic. In and uh, so, please welcome and uh, have a nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, uh, Sabahatin, uh, for having me, and thank you all for coming. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, the, uh, as you can see on the screen, I have to cut this a little short. We're having this as an awkward cutoff point in 1918. Um, let me just very quickly tell you what, what this is all about. Um, as you're probably familiar, Ottoman-German relationships have usually been looked at in the context of great power politics, imperialism, both hard and soft, or in the military or economic spheres. Um, then if you take it further into the 20th century, when you talk about um, the, um, the uh, what, one of the main outcomes of the Ottoman Empire, its main, one of the, its main successor states, the Republic of Turkey, and its relationship to Germany, a lot of people, or the majority of people, will actually think about um, the um, migration of Turkish people to Germany, which did a huge um, uh, contribution to Germany's re rebuilding after World War II, and something which neither the German government nor the German people are, are half as grateful for as they should be. Um, you, many people won't think about Germans as immigrants or m people who move the other way, yet um, I got interested a short, about two years ago into um, the German community or communities, you should actually so plural, in the late Ottoman Empire and early Turkish Republic. There's been a bit of scholarship done on German immigrants to Turkey fleeing from the, the National Socialists after 1933. Before that, there's relatively little. Um, what I'm focusing on tonight are two German expatriates or immigrants. You see, I'm falling into this fallacy of calling them expatriates, not immigrants. Um, for one of them, expatriate would, uh, it would be more suitable because he's only in, the, in the, the Ottoman Empire for relatively short periods of time. I'm looking at the journalist uh, Friedrich Schrade and the academic Martin Hartmann. The, and I'm looking at them as uh, observers and participants in late Ottoman cultural life because as theater goers, uh, buyers of books and writers of literary reviews, um, these, both of them took an active part in the cultural life of the Ottoman capital in the years following the Young Turk Revolution, when there was a renewed flowering in cultural output. Using their local knowledge and fluency in Ottoman Turkish, both were able to gain unique insights um, at odds with the popular portrayal of Ottoman uh, affairs in the Western media. On the other hand, neither of those two authors was immune to the biases of their times and constantly questioning the extent to which Ottoman literary expression and in particular what they called the emerging Turkish, natural lit uh, sorry, Turkish national literature were original or civilized. So a glimpse and a, in a way, trial drilling and presenting of uh, initial findings from a larger project that I hope will start a bit earlier than 1908 and will take me to about um, up to 1933 when the scholars of that period will have taken over. Uh, I'm going to spare you my lengthy introduction about uh, German-Ottoman relationships. Um, the, the only point I would like to point out, but is often overlooked and doesn't really make it into the textbooks, is that um, there was a very, very fruitful discourse in Germany in writing books, what we would now call current affairs analysis, 
newspaper coverage of what goes on in the Ottoman lands and later on in the successor states of the empire. Um, and this sparks a plethora of books, pamphlets, newspaper articles. Um, so in a period with, besides being a seminal period in Ottoman history in general and Turkish history later, also makes an intensi uh, marks an intensification of the relationship between the Ottoman Empire and Germany. And during these years, Germans traveled extensively in the Ottoman Empire in di uh, different functions and settled down, and as we will see, had German Ottoman families in some cases. And what makes them interesting for us as a historian, they leave traces in the shape of the great number of books and, and articles and other pieces of output, output they have written. And the other interesting thing I've found, you can divide this output roughly into a, a positive and a critical school of thinking. The, um, the skeptical, the op or the, sorry, the optimistic school of thinking would portray the uh, late Ottoman Empire, especially after the Young Turk Revolution, as the coming power in the Middle East a power that an equally ambitious Germany would be well served to ally themselves with. The more skeptical school continued to see the Ottoman Empire as backward, decaying and despotic along what we would now recognize as more classical Orientalist lines of thinking. Important in this whole tumultuous context is the otherwise idyllic world of German academia. German universities have become leading in the field of Middle East studies in the course of the 19th century. German scholars were to become entangled in the hard or soft imperialist endeavors to a degree which would really have gladdened the late Edward Said's heart. I cannot el elaborate on the topic here more, but um, this has been uh, uh, Analyzed, for example, by a recent book by Suzanne L. Marchand, German Orientalism in the Age of Empire, Religion, Race, and Scholarship, a very uh, thorough treatment that I would like to just point out. So in the remaining time and space, I would like to devote uh, uh, myself to giving a few examples from the writings of two men. There's women involved as well. But, um, there's a, I'm following the, the bias of the times against white men with big beards, as you will see in the, in the pictures. They were, they were women writers as well involved in this, um, who in different ways have become part of this uh, political cultural nexus I've tried to describe above. above. The first um, person I've come across is the gentleman to your left. Martin Hartmann uh, was born in 1851 in Breslau, Lower Silesia, which is today Poland. Um, and I will explain in a minute what Mehmet Emin Yureko does up there. Uh, Hartmann started to study theology in his hometown and moved to Leipzig in 1874, and where he began to study what was then a really up and growing field, that of Oriental languages. Very early in his student days, Hartmann developed a dislike for the agenda of German Middle East studies at the time, which had a, a focus on philosophy, uh, sorry, philology, grammar, medieval literature, that did not look at Oriental societies as living organisms. I myself, as an undergraduate in, at a German university, was a late flower of that. We would not study anything later than the Abbasid period, and the early Abbasid period, that was. Um, for the rest of his career, Hartmann uh, advocated an approach that looked at Middle Eastern societies as living organisms. He was to call, often in a very aggressive and opinionated way, for a study of contemporary Middle Eastern societies influenced, among others, by Max Weber and the emerging discipline of sociology. And very early on, he put his academic knowledge to a practical use. He entered the German diplomatic service as a trainee dragoman or consular interpreter in the late 1870s and served as uh, with the German consulate in Beirut. Um, we all know when, when we hear dragoman, we think fanariots and that sort of thing. By um, the late 19th century, the Germans and other European powers had um, started to train some of their own nationals to take over the functions of consular interpreters. During his years of work and travel in Greater Syria, Hartmann developed a liking for the Arabs, especially the Arab Christians, who he compared favorably to the Ottoman ruling class and became, as one of his colleagues wrote, a Turk hater. There's a very not so nice 
writers at the time do not nicely distinguish between Ottomans and Turks. Very often when they, uh, when they say Turks, they mean Ottomans as a blanket term. In Hartmann's opinion, the Arabs were about to regain their ancient cultural and political supremacy after centuries of Ottoman oppression and misrule. Hartmann returned to Germany in 1887 when he became a lecturer in Arabic at um, the, newly, the new, newly founded School of Oriental Languages in Berlin. Most likely due to the long uh, period of time he spent in Bilad Sham, Hartmann came to espouse uh, the Arab cause against what he perceived as unjust Ottoman Turkish domination of the region. Especially in the Christians of Syria and Lebanon, he saw potential for lasting improvement and progress of the region. Despite a focus in his work, both as a diplomat later and later as a scholar, on the Arabic-speaking parts of the Middle East, Hartmann also dealt with other parts of the region. In his academic work, as I said, he was an advocate of the study of current affairs, as opposed to an emphasis on history and philology that his colleagues were getting justly famous for. Hartmann had numerous contacts in the Ottoman capital, and he traveled and stayed in Istanbul and other places in Anatolia and the Ottoman Balkans several times, beside lengthy study trips to uh, greater Syria, Egypt, Iraq, and Yemen. Observations he made during a stay of several months in Istanbul in Izmir in 1909 were published in several German newspapers and later as a book that he entitled Unpolitische Briefe aus der Türkei, Apolitical Letters or Unpolitical Letters, letters from Turkey. So he, in the title is his program that he's not trying to influence any political debates about what sort of stance Germany should take, what Middle East policy it should take. Um, he's uh, positioning himself as an, an impartial observer. We'll see in a minute that he was far from impartial. These letters were, as he claims, written out versions of notes that Hartmann took during his wanderings during the streets of Istanbul and Izmir, and after meetings with personalities whom he deemed important, often, as he says, I quote him, directly after the meeting, standing at the first quiet street corner. And uh, in this coming April, I will have a, an opportunity to look at Hartmann's papers at the University of Halle, and I would be terrifically excited if I could get hold of his notebooks from that time. We will see. In this published version of his notes, Hartmann discusses several topics, among them uh, the turbulent politics of the time immediately after the Young Turk Revolution of 1908, which uh, resulted in an experiment with parliamentary democracy, but eventually, as we know, uh, brought renewed internal unrest. In contrast to his admiration and praise for the Arabs, Hartmann's comments about the uh, non-Arab, especially ethnically Turkish part of the Ottoman population, and he does not, as I said, not often very cleanly distinguish between Turkish, Albanian, Circassian, these finer points. We really need to lay the blame for, uh, to him for that. Um, so he, dis he doesn't hold back with comments about the, this Ottoman part of the population, often in the shape of politicians. This is very much less clement. His appraisal of young Turk politics and what he sees as what he keeps calling the Turkish way of doing things are very often critical or dismissive, bordering on the vitriolic. A good example of Hartmann's overall low opinion of, and here I focus on cultural and scholarly activities, is his account of a conversation with some Ottoman intellectuals in a bookstore.